So now it's officially December, and while I've already done one musings video getting to some of the lingering thoughts I wanted to make sure I got out before the end of the year, I actually have a lot more thoughts to get to, at least enough for one more video, this one at least. Now, in the last video, I was talking about why 500 watt graphics cards could be a bigger problem for a lot of consumers than it seems like a lot of people seem to be acknowledging online. And I also leaked some LGA 1700 chipset information. Well, well, this video is more about the smaller things, graphics cards specifically. Longtime viewers of this channel will know that. It's been becoming more and more increasingly obvious that finally in quarter one, we will have some real low end competition, not just from AMD, but also from Intel and possibly it seems from Nvidia. That's what I mostly want to talk about today. But actually, in fact, a reason I'm getting this video out so quickly right next to a broken silicon is that, well, before the launch of the 2060 12 gigabyte, I wanted to make sure I told you guys some important information about what to expect about that launch. So let's talk about that first. Now, I talked about the RTX 2060 a few months ago, and of course, plenty of people have been leaking that. Recently, it's come to the attention of people like video cards and others that the 2060 12 gigabyte is really more like a 2060 super cut down to a 192 bit bus, oddly with 12 gigabytes. It seems odd, doesn't it? Like, if you were making a graphics card to help with gamer supply and I thought maybe a few months ago compete in the low end better with a 6600 you think what they would do is just do a I don't know 300 250 dollar 6 gigabyte 2060 or I guess a 12 gigabyte 2060 and slot it just below the 3060 12 gigabyte because Either they don't want to cut down the 3060 more, or they don't feel like the die used for the 3050 Ti laptops right now, GA107, will be strong enough to compete. Based on what I'm gathering here, yeah, there's a reason that all is getting more and more confusing. It's because that doesn't seem to be what this graphics card is actually for, and I'm going to get straight to the point. So, source number one. This person is very well connected, and the individual said that AIBs this person spoke to won't have samples for weeks after release, possibly not even for sale in many regions, and that many major tech channels aren't getting any for review. And when I say major, I mean like, you know, people that are large, like fact magnitudes bigger than me are getting any for review. So this doesn't seem like a major launch. And in fact, a lot of people told this person that it seemed to be a mining card. Okay, well, that seems weird, doesn't it? Why launch just a 12 gigabyte 2060 to gamers if it's a mining card. But again, talking to one of my sources who is a major OEM, this person said that they won't be getting any 12 gigabyte 2060s for their systems, which is odd if this is a real launch for gamers. They're excited about both Navi24 and Intel Arc. And this, this is, you know, again, one of the biggest OEMs in the world. They would definitely be getting this if this was a real launch for gamers. Finally, source number three, one of my best connected sources I talked to said that yeah, AIBs seem to have a few models at most, but not as many as usual, and that there is no plans, as far as this person can tell, for there to be a major launch and push of the card. And that, well, there doesn't really seem to be a founder's card, which video cards also corroborates. What I suggested to me, and this is from multiple people this person talked to, just like some of my other sources, is that it's cover for the launch of a mining SKU. You see, NVIDIA seems to be launching a 12 gigabyte TU-106 Turing card for the mining market. But to justify why they're producing this SKU, they're going to simultaneously basically almost paper launch a version of it to gamers for ridiculous prices in small volume with no real coverage from major outlets because it's not meant for gamers to buy. They just want to be able to explain why they're producing this weird 12 gigabyte 2060. And they don't want to have to say, we literally are doing production of a specific SKU for mining contracts that are making up a large portion of our revenue still as we directly sell to miners. Um, yeah, that's what the 2060 12 gigabyte is. It sounds like it will be at retail. It sounds like some people will be able to buy it. But don't expect a lot of fanfare and don't expect a lot of coverage at first because really... What they're doing is launching a 12 gigabyte 2060 at the same time they're building a 12 gigabyte Turing card for miners and they want to be able to say it's for gamers. 
it's not. But yeah, I wanted to make sure that I got that information out about the 2060 12 gigabyte before the really almost fake launch day on Tuesday, because that's when Broken Silicon is dropping. And I think this information is important for you to hear before the launch date. Now, let's move on to talking about low-end graphics card competition in quarter one. I have been thinking about it more and more over the past couple months as I've been more and more realizing that I think it might be much more competitive or precarious to segment for the companies competing there, NVIDIA, Intel, and AMD, than a lot of people might be anticipating. The first reason I think it might be very competitive, or more so than people expect in quarter one with these low-end cards, is because, well, it just always kind of has to be in terms of price performance. The higher you go towards the top of a product stack, the more it's just about top performance. If you command the performance lead, a lot of people will pay whatever you ask. So it's not as much about top price performance up there. It's about top performance and features. But the lower you get in the product stack, the more it is people who really are trying to save money and are probably more likely to be looking at the best product for the price. So that's always been true. And that's point number one. But I think it's gonna be even more so true this time around, because we really haven't had low end graphics cards launching that are new for years, right? And so this is a barren segment that a lot of people have waited to touch for a while now. And in fact, it's not just because it's been barren for a while that will make this competitive. It's because of how awkward the RAM segmentation will be, especially when it seems like Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA are taking different approaches to how they will segment their entry-level graphics cards. Right? I want to talk about what I mean by that and who is likely to come out on top, or at least what will be required from each company to come out on top in the low end next year. But first, an ad from a sponsor. Happy holidays, everybody. Today's piece of content is sponsored by CDKeyOffers.com. This holiday season, I think there's a lot of things you might be shopping for when it comes to software, whether it's the latest PlayStation, Steam, Origin, or other gaming platform games, or if it's a key for Windows 10 Professional, Windows 11, or even Office 2021 to get gaming next year with a new build, or maybe to just stay productive at work. No matter what you need, whether it's for work or play, play cd key offers has you covered for a reasonable price and in fact you can save even more money than what you're seeing on screen if you use these offer codes that help moore's law is that if you use them broken silicon gets you 30 percent off windows keys and die shrink gets you three percent off everything on the website including games so whether you're looking for a piece of software to occupy your leisure time over this holiday season or you're looking for a reasonably priced microsoft software which usually let's be honest they're just not Go to cdkeyoffers.com today, use the link in the description, and, well, have a good holiday season where you don't overspend thanks to cdkeyoffers.com. All right, so the first set of low-end graphics cards launched in quarter one that I want to talk about are the ones from AMD, the 6500 XT and 6400 XT. These are the graphics cards that I exclusively leaked in October were based on, at least in the top version, a 120-watt version of the Navi 24, which was pretty puzzling back then because, well, Navi 24 specs didn't look that impressive, but I had confirmed from multiple sources that at least what I can 100% say is there definitely seems to be a 120 watt version of it that's pushed super hard and launching early quarter one and that it seemed to be beating the 3050 ti now i stumbled upon some forum posts today while doing research for this video and i think there's some misconceptions about what i leaked there that i want to address directly right i am not mistaken that this is some cut down navi 23 for two reasons number one that doesn't make any sense i mean come on dude the, the amd's using an ultra mature TSMC seven nanometer node that's been used since early 2019 on the Radeon seven, actually late 2018 for the professional versions of that first. So no, they don't need to cut down very many cards, especially small ones. They already have a cut down version of Navi 23, the 6600. They don't need to cut down any more than that. So no, at most they would consider, I think a four gigabyte 6600, which yeah, that's an interesting option. But otherwise, these sources are very sure about Navi 24. So they specifically said Navi 24 quarter one 120 watts. And I shared them 
the apprehension here that how could this compete with a 3050 Ti? Well, remember, half of that video where I leaked this information was talking about how I was skeptical about the performance I was being told. But I came to the conclusion that it wasn't that crazy. You just have to actually pay attention to what's being communicated in leaks, right? Let's do this simple math right here. I know 16 compute units doesn't sound like a lot, but let's compare it to the 6600. That's 57% of the compute, and the 6600 is clocked very low for RDNA 2. Okay then, we already have been told that this is a 75 watt die being pushed to 120 watts. So what do you think that means? It's probably pushed to 2.5 gigahertz or higher. And so if we multiply 1.2, just say it's clocked 20% higher than what the 6600 is, we get to, well, yeah, around 60 to 70% of the compute, depending on how well it scales. And yeah, that would place it around a 1660 to 1660 Ti, which I think people are forgetting. The 3050 Ti sucks ass. This thing can't even beat a 1660 Ti at same power usage. And so I think Navi 24 is probably going to be very successful. Back then, I thought maybe it could have 8 gigabytes or 4, but recent leaks suggest 4 gigabytes, which I thought was the right decision because this is really something that can be produced in high volume. And it's really not going to be good for anything above 1080p and just barely 1080p, like medium settings at 60 to 90 frames most likely. So at those performance levels, I actually think 4 gigabytes is enough. And having half the RAM of the 6600 XT, having a die size probably half as big, I see no reason to believe AMD couldn't sell this with good margins at about $190 or less. If they want to be aggressive, they can go all the way down to $150 in my eyes and still have good margins, which is exciting. But they will have to keep it below $200, I believe. Uh, or at least if they want to be competitive, who knows how greedy they get. I, I wouldn't rule out $250, guys, I I'll be honest, but... I think if they really want to be competitive, they have to keep it below 200 because they will be possibly competing with a card I've been dancing around addressing directly, an NVIDIA RTX 3050. Now, I have to say, up front, this may surprise some people, I actually haven't had direct confirmation of the 3050 from any of my OEM, AIB, or other sources yet. Granted, I haven't dug very hard on this card, so let's put it that way. It's like I've tried, but anytime I've asked here and there, it's not as concrete as the other ones. So I'm thinking it's definitely launching after ARC and, well, at least after the 6500 XT. But what would it be and how could it be competitive? Well, let's put it this way. Like I said, GA107 hasn't proven very impressive. And even if the GA107 being used on laptops right now is a cut down die, which to be honest, guys, if you look it up, information about die size and other things on GA107 isn't very widely known. But, but let's say it's they can push it another 30% or so and just get it somewhere just below a desktop 2060 in performance, which recent rumors seem to be suggesting it could be. Well, yeah, okay. But that die, even GA107, is probably notably bigger than Navi24 with a 128-bit bus. So what do you do with this, right? It is going to cost more to produce than Navi24. Well, I, I frankly think NVIDIA has to give it 8 gigabytes of RAM and push it as hard as they can, make it more of like a 140-watt card, and then I guess it's 300 that's such a weird price point still to try to get away with when Gamers Nexus already covered that NVIDIA is having trouble getting good margins with a 6 gigabyte 3060 below 300. 8 gigabytes after memory prices have gone up? I don't know, but that's kind of where I feel like NVIDIA is forced to go here. With an 8 gigabyte card that is likely to beat Navi24 by 10 to 20%, but also use more energy, and it just has to cost more and if the 6600 ever gets closer to MSRP, we'll make that card look like a joke. And again, whether it's based on a more cut down GA106, which again is what is in the 3060 and I feel like is a weird decision. Like why cut down GA106 more? You've already cut it down some and why not just launch a six gigabyte 3060? I guess NVIDIA is not putting as much pressure on AMD as they could be because of how much it'll cost to produce these cards, but at least puts a price ceiling. It means AMD can't Make Navi24 $250 with just four gigabytes unless NVIDIA also gives their card, whether based on a more cut down GA106 or a fully pushed GA107, four gigabytes as well at that price point. And um, yeah, can you see how it's being more competitive here at the low end? Well, actually, it is the new entrant on the market that I've leaked much about already 
Intel Arc that I think may have the best low-end winner here. And I think it's because it's the best configured, right? So let's recap what we're talking about, why I think this is such an interesting segment to look at the competition at right now. We have at the top probably some push GA107 or some more cut down GA106 that should be able to easily beat a really push Navi24, but not by as much as you would think, and it costs more to produce. Okay, well... My understanding is that the 128 execution unit art card is also a very small die. It's on 6 nanometer, in fact, just like Navi 24, in that it actually uses less energy than Navi 24. It's more efficient. I don't believe it's as strong, though. I think it's more like a 1650 super killer, most likely, maybe just below a 1660 at best. But it should be about as cheap to produce as Navi 24, and that 96-bit bus can have 6 gigabytes of RAM. Which again, I know what everyone's thinking. Okay, so what you're saying, Tom, is NVIDIA wins performance, AMD second place, Intel's third, no surprise. Doesn't seem like Intel's that competitive. Hmm. Well, you're forgetting how close all of those Turing cards were in performance. You know, the 1660 was only like 10 to 20% better than a 1650 Super. And the 1660 Ti was, again, about... 20, 15, 20% better. And we're not even sure it'll be as strong as a 1660 Ti, the 3050 on desktop, that is. So with that in mind, all of these cards are within the same 15 to 30% performance of each other. It really is going to come down to memory segmentation and price. And it seems like, you know, AMD's going with four gigabytes, but in, Intel's going to have six. So in other words, if you had a 75 watt card that doesn't need a six pin, which a lot of low end people have cheap power supplies, if you have a 75 watt card with six gigabytes of RAM priced the same amount as a four gigabyte card that requires a six pin and is only like 10, 15% stronger, which one are you going to go with? Now, I know in 720p, the AMD card might win, but what about in 1080p? What about in games that are a little older that you can actually get away with in 1440p because you have six gigabytes of RAM and you're not reliant on a tiny amount of 16 megabytes of infinity cache? It's going to come down to price because Intel will probably technically have the weakest of these cards, but it also has more than enough VRAM and uses the least amount of energy. So if Intel hits $150, I actually think Intel has the most competitive product. But again, only if they hit the cheapest price and only if AMD doesn't try to price match them. If they're both $150 cards, they'll be evenly matched. And that's what I'm really hoping happens here because... <laughs> It would make whatever NVIDIA is going to have come out, even if it's the strongest, look pretty preposterous using substantially more energy and costing twice as much. Um, well, I guess you can see what I'm getting to. We're just going to have to see how this shakes out. We won't know exact performance and pricing on all three of these cards probably for about another month now. And that is what will really, knowing the final performance of all of them, dictate the final pricing of all of them. And so, yeah. Look out for that. I think we have a much more interesting matchup in low-end competition next year than a lot of people expected. And yeah, I mean, that's going to just about do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I wanted to get that out there about the 2060 12 gigabyte and my thoughts that I wanted to get out before the end of the year on low-end competition, kind of a primer to have them back of your mind when you're opening presents on Christmas before we get into heavy coverage in January. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to ring the bell button after checking that you've subscribed to the channel. YouTube unsubscribes you sometimes. And uh, also consider supporting us on Patreon where you'll get early ad-free access access to Broken Silicon, excellent premium podcasts like Die Shrink that only patrons get and the ability to ask me and guest questions. And uh, for everyone else, though, nonetheless, thank you for watching. <laughs>